Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today I want to show you how to make a tin can fry pan. Stay tuned. So for this project you're going to need one can. This is a number 10 can and this one just had green beans in it. It didn't cost a whole lot of money and uh, put the green beans in another container uh, using for cooking later. And then using a safety can opener cut off the top so you don't have any sharp edges because we're going to use this lid and uh, we're going to make sure that this doesn't have any sharp edges for when we're working on our project. Next you're going to need some simple tools. Just a drill, although you could use a nail. You also will need some pop rivets and of course the bit here is size to fit the pop rivets. You're going to need some kind of tin snips, a pair of pliers, a sharpie, and a pop rivet setter. So the first thing we're going to do after removing the lid and the label we're going to identify where the seam is because we want to make sure that we don't uh, compromise that seam. And what we're going to do then is going to take our Sharpie here. This is an industrial Sharpie. And we're just going to mark where these ribs are. We're going to go one up from the bottom. And we're going to start here. So we're not going to use the very bottom rib and I'll show you why in a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to draw a relatively straight line down this way. Now you can use whatever you want, a ruler, a stick, anything that's relatively straight will work. And we want to make this about that wide. So again, it's not not rocket science, we're just trying to uh, gauge about how wide it should be. And we're coming down so that we have two marks like that. We're going to do on the other side exactly opposite. Now that we have both sides marked out, I'm going to take the Sharpie. You don't have to do this, but it will help you stay on course. And we're just going to mark a line, not over across these lines we just made but on either side of it just following that second rib until we get something that looks like this. Next we take our tin snips or metal cutting shears whatever you have I like these are made by Fiskars and they work really well and we're just going to cut each of these out following that relatively straight line. This does not have to be perfect. You just want to be careful you don't cut yourself you may want to lose, use gloves. And I'll go ahead and cut these out and I'll get back with you. Now that we have these two cut out, we now need to follow the black line that we made around the second rib and cut this section off. This will be discarded. You can work from both sides if it helps you or you can just cut straight across. Alright, so we do not need that and that will be discarded. Okay, now what we have is we have something that looks like like this. So what we're going to do, we're going to take these two sides here and we're going to roll them just like this. And again, being very careful because these edges are sharp, what we're going to do is we're going to roll it around and this is actually fairly easy to do until we have something that looks like that. I'm going to do it on both sides. So we end up with something like this. Now, at this point, you want to make sure that you have enough of this metal here that rolls around that it connects to the top here because that is where we're going to put our rivet. So using the drill and very carefully making sure that we don't you know, drill a finger, and you could do this with a nail also. But we want to go ahead and put a hole in here. And
And if you wish, it makes it easier for you. You can put it on the edge of something. I'm using this piece of a log here. And we have that one hole. Once we get that done, it makes it a lot easier for the second one as it works as a guide. And now we just know where our uh, hole is going to be. So we have it marked right there. Put it again on the edge of the stump. Put our hole in. So now we have one here, one here. We're going to do that to both sides. Okay, so now that we have the holes drilled on both sides, as you can see here, we take our pop rivets and the pop rivet setter, insert it like so, and go through both of these holes, holding it very carefully, trying to keep it tight, and squeeze, and there's one, and there we go. So now we have these fastened on, and it looks something like this. You can shape these and make them as round as you wish, but what we want is we want them off to the side so that it looks like this. Next, using our snips, and remember we left one rib here on the can. We're going to start here at the handle, and we're going to snip just real small pieces all the way down to the middle of that rib, all the way around. Just like that. Once we get all of our little cuts made all the way around, we are then going to take the pliers and very carefully we're going to start to fold these tabs down. We're going to fold them all the way around and then we're going to crimp them. And again, you want to be careful with this. You don't want to cut yourself. But once you get them down part way, you can actually use your thumb to push them over. So you can use the pliers to get it started and then finish by using a thumb if you have the finger strength to do that. And then you can go back with the pliers and apply a full crimp. Now also, if you're really careful and you don't want to use the pliers, you can just use fingers to do this, but it's a little more dangerous. My hands, I work with them a lot, so they're kind of toughened, have a lot of calluses. But you can bend this over by hand and then finish it off with the pliers if, if you would like. All right, so now that that's all the way around like that, we're going to take the pliers and we're just going to go all around real carefully like this. All right, and so what that does is that gives us a relatively safe edge. Now, there's going to be some little points here and there, and you could file those off a little bit with a file if you wish. But for the most part, it's not real sharp. It's not going to cut you using it. Now, we go to our lid. And as you can see, it doesn't really want to fit on there very good because of these handles. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of test fit it, figure out where we want it. And then we're going to take the Sharpie and we're going to mark it a little wider than our handles. Using the snips, we go ahead and cut this in just a little ways. Not a lot, but just enough for us to bend it over. And then, using your fingers or the pliers, whatever you wish, go ahead Bend that in, finish crimping it down with the pliers. Looks like that. And now we have a lid that will fit on there. And uh, this is very useful, of course, to keep ashes out and anything else. You don't have to make the slits this big. You can make them actually smaller if you wish. All right, the next step is we need to go and put this in a fire and we need to burn out all of the plastic BPA coating before we go on to the next stage and show you how this uh, how this all comes together. Stay tuned, we're not done. There's some more cool stuff about this pan. All right, so get a good fire going. Then you wanna place your pan right in the flames as well as the lid. 
use the multi-tool here. Just going to put it in here. We're trying to burn off all of that plastic that's inside because we don't want that in our food. And you can see that it's starting to brown and actually starting to burn off right around that edge. And we want that whole thing to burn. We do not want any plastic left inside of the container. So another thing you'll notice as this burns off right over in that section you can see it's getting much lighter right over in that area and we want the whole pan to look like that. That means we're down to metal and all of the coating is burned off. As now you can see it's almost all burned off except for just a little in the middle part there and it is rapidly disappearing as the pan heats up and as it burns off the remainder of what's left of that plastic residue. Now that it is sufficiently cooled off where we can handle it, and of course we have the top here, something you can do that makes us a little bit more useful is using a piece of wood here. Find the approximate center. It doesn't have to be absolute perfect. But you can use your awl or the drill if you wish. But all we're going to do is put just a little hole right in the center of this pan. Next, take a small piece of wood here and I just round it off the top and put a little hole in it and then you need a small screw. This happens to be Phillips head. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up through this hole here we made inside and we're going to fasten this on here so our lid has a handle. We have this. Now I did go ahead and refold these because they I made the slots a little too big the first time. All right, so now it fits on there perfectly, and we have a nice little pot with a lid. All right, we got to wash this out. Let's cook something. I have a couple of tips that I want to show you how this works. Okay, so now that we have our pan washed out, ready to go. We're going to take some olive oil and we're going to pour a fair amount into this pan. I want plenty. Okay, I don't want to go stingy on my olive oil because remember, this is an uncoated pan. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to spread this around the bottom. Make sure it's thoroughly coated everywhere and all the ribs and also up around the edges. Taking care, of course, not to cut myself. Next, we're going to take a couple of eggs, a little egg carrier here. Just like that. Okay, now, how do we put this on the fire? Well, you're going to need a couple of sticks. I've been using this to stir the fire with. And all we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to stick them in both sides and cross the back just like this. Then we can hold it with one hand and uh, this makes our frying pan handle. And we're going to set it onto our coals just like this. Try to make it level and then we remove the sticks. Okay you can see our eggs are starting to fry in our tin can fry pan. We're going to put the lid on there, help keep any ashes out of it let it do its thing. I'm going to check on it. It's looking pretty good. We've got a hand carved spatula here and we're just going to look up under here and see how this is doing. Oh it's frying up real nice. It's not sticking to the bottom of the pan. Go ahead and divide them here in half. Flip it here in just a little bit. Perfect. You can see how well it's working. Oh, it looks good. It's done. Nothing sticking to the bottom like it's supposed to. Let's go ahead and pull it off the fire. And uh, There you go. Well, we're ready to eat. Really neat thing about this tin can fry pan is that it's uh, very lightweight. It's cheap made from recycled items. It weighs 5.9 ounces, 
which is just a little heavier than my titanium frying pan. Uh, my titanium frying pan weighs 5.3 ounces without a lid. This one with the lid, 5.9. So very, very lightweight, extremely easy to use, not that hard to make. And uh, when you use oil in it, you're cooking, frying, baking, whatever, uh, it, uh, it doesn't stick to the bottom. It works great. So let's, uh, let's try our eggs and see, see how they taste. Perfect. A hobo couldn't want any better. <clears throat> As you can see, nothing stuck to the bottom of the pan. It fits nicely in a Ziploc bag. So lightweight carrying. Everything's very cheap. And if you would happen to tear it up or burn it out, then you could always easily make another one. I would recommend just keeping some oil in it. And that'll make it last a long time and we'll keep it from burning out. But you should get a lot of meals out of something like this. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.